Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. It's great to have you tuning in today. I got a question for you as you get started today. Have you ever said the words, you just don't know what it's like, or you just don't understand? And maybe in the context that you said that in, it made sense. Maybe it was true. Maybe the person you were talking to, maybe the person you were expressing that sentiment to hadn't been through what you were going through, hadn't experienced the pain or the difficulty that you were carrying, hadn't faced the situation that you were navigating. But did you know that statement never applies to our relationship with Jesus? He understands. He's walked in our shoes, maybe not literally, but he's faced all of the difficulty. He's experienced the temptation. He's felt the hardship. He's felt the pain of everything. And as we look at relationships and the highs and lows, he gets it because he had friends, he had people, he had family, he had people that he walked through life with. When we experience the amazing uh, just uh, joy of having people that are for us and on our side, he gets it. And when we experience the pain of betrayal, of hurt from people close to us, he gets it as well. Because one of the close storylines of, of his life that we see, and, and maybe the one that is known um, by so many even who don't know the Bible and believe in Jesus as Savior, is the betrayal of one of his disciples named Judas. And we see the, the awareness of Jesus uh, in our passage today that, that he was going to be betrayed and, and kind of see where that takes us in terms of how could this happen? What, what led to that taking place? So let's take a look at what happens here. Matthew 26, starting in verse 17, it says this. Now the first day of the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go to the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. Now, when it was evening, he reclined at the table with the 12. As they were eating, he said, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him after uh, each other, is it I, Lord? And he answered, the one who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man of whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, is it I, Rabbi? And he said to him, you have said so. Now, the, the words that are chosen here give us a little insight as to how did we get to this point? How did Judas, someone who had spent the better part of three years following every single day, seeing Jesus perform miracles, watching him teach, seeing just the incredible power and majesty that he lived with, seeing day after day evidence that he was the son of God and savior of the world. How does he then take all of that and throw it away for what we find elsewhere is just 30 pieces of silver as compensation for betraying Jesus? I want you to, to notice some of the words that are used there. As Jesus says, hey, one of you will betray me, the other 11 disciples go around the table and say, is it I, Lord? They, they address Jesus as Lord as they question, hey, is it going to be me? I don't think it's me, but am I going to mess up? Am I going to do that? And after Jesus continues to explain the, the significance and the, the weight of this betrayal, Judas speaks up as number 12 he said, is it I, rabbi? He didn't call him Lord. He called him rabbi or teacher. And what's interesting is not just this setting here. And if you look through all of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will not find an account of Judas addressing Jesus as Lord. He will address him as rabbi and teacher, but he never addresses him as Lord, which means that we don't really know his heart more than we can know anyone else's heart, but it's an indicator that maybe he never came to a place of truly acknowledging Jesus as Lord. Never came to the place of truly acknowledging who Jesus was as the Son of God and Savior of the world, but just seeing him as a good teacher. And I think that that is such an incredible risk that we run today as well. We're not following Jesus around, listening to him teach on hillsides and perform miracles and heal people and bring back sight and raise people from the dead. 
but it's really easy to see Jesus as just a good teacher. It's so easy and so dangerous for us to look at the, the God who, who has sent his son Jesus here and see, well, he sent us a good example, a role model, a teacher, because that's what so much of our world wants to do. Because I understand that if we acknowledge as society that Jesus is more than a teacher, then there's implications beyond that. And so for you, I want you to, to question and really decide, have you just called Jesus a good teacher, a role model, an example? Or maybe another lesson we can see here is that proximity isn't enough. It's not enough to be near Jesus if you're not fully devoted to following him and submitting to his lordship in your life. It's not enough to be present in church, to faithfully watch word for the day every single morning at 5 a.m. or whenever you're tuning in here today. It's not enough to just be involved in present because that doesn't get us to heaven any more than it kept Judas from betraying the Son of God and Savior of the world because proximity isn't enough. So today, understand that, that we here at Calvary desire for you to see Jesus as more than just a good role model and teacher, to see church as more than just a place where you can get some feel-good emotions for your week, but for Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life and for church to be a place where you grow in your submission and obedience to following him on a regular basis. Because when you do that, your life will be changed and Jesus will go from more than just a role model and teacher to being a God who transforms your life. That's our hope and prayer for you, Calvary. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.